So order seven, we will continue with the remaining part. So last class, we discussed the first two parts, particulars of plaint and this part, return of plaint till section, till this or rule N B. So the next part is rejection of plaint, the grounds based on which it may be rejected. So it's there in uh, rule 11 of CPC order seven, rejection of plaint. So uh, rule 11 talks about the grounds or the situations wherein the plaint may be rejected. First of all, it is where the cause of action is not properly been uh, reflected when in submitting the plaint, they have written the situation, but maybe cause of action is not properly reflected. It might happen that some material facts are not been properly presented or details are not been uh, provided as such. Like last time also we saw one uh, case where it was like party has given the details, but then court wrongly said that you have not provided this material detail that material detail is not being provided. But it's not just about material uh, facts or it's not just about the facts based on which court to try to prove the matter, but it is about whether cause of action is reflecting or not. Why party is approaching the court, that part is been reflected in the plaint or not. That is what is important. So a plaint can be rejected by the court if it does not mention a cause of action, which is to be taken by the plaintiff against the respondent, it is perceived as absence of the process, absence of the process of court. So cause of action would be necessary so that court would know what is the reason why plaintiff is approaching the court. So a part of plaint cannot be rejected. It might happen that some parts court may say that you strike out this part, but as such rejection, if the matter is not being reflected, court may reject the entire plain don't be. There was this case, Summer Singh versus Kedarnath, wherein an appeal was filed under section 116A of Representation of Peoples Act 1951 against a judgment of Allahabad High Court. And while filing this appeal, the respondent, that is Kedarnath, own Lok Sabha elections from uh, Hapur, the Appellant was able to secure only 611 votes in the election. The election petition was rejected under this ground because it does not disclose any cause of action. So even if there was this difference of 617 votes, what is the cause of action? Why is the party approaching the court? Is it simply because he lost the election or is it that he suspects there are some irregularities in counting of votes or some other matter. So that cause of action has to be reflected. Otherwise, it would not sustain. The previous case that we saw, it was also somewhat similar only that case was being filed by the party saying that there was just a marginal difference, very less difference in uh, the number of votes Right, some 32 votes were there and based on that, the other party owned the election. But then court said that, yes, he has mentioned that there were irregularities. Some For some dead people also, other persons have given vote. So those matters were being properly reflected. But in this case, the matter was only that he lost the election. So that will not as such reflect cause of action. Another case we have wherein revision petition was filed against an order of uh, first additional subordinate judge. And in this case, additional judge rejected the plaint on the ground that there was no cause of action mentioned. Defendants sought to get the plaint rejected in this case and ultimately plaint was rejected on the ground of absence of uh, cause of action. So the main matter has to be reflected why the party is approaching. There was another case wherein also same thing happened. So when a plaint has been submitted, the other person may say that like when uh, he served it right for submission of written statement, he may mention that as such, it's not reflecting any uh, like cause of action. What is the ground that party is approaching? So this is clause A is the first one which talks about cause of action is not being reflected in the plaint. 
clause B is relief claimed is undervalued and the plaintiff on being required by court also he ha he failed to provide uh, he failed to do the corrections in terms of valuation within the time that was provided by the court. So that is the second reason based on which it may be uh, rejected, plaint may be rejected if the amount of compensation that is being demanded is lesser than the requisite. Such court may provide some time to correct it if within that period it has not been corrected, then also plaint may be rejected. Like if a person is having like a property of one crore and he was owner of the property, but then someone else wrongfully occupies that property. B wrongfully occupies A's property and A goes to the court filing a case. So here valuation also like the uh, valuation of the case also would be one crore based on that the court fee would be paid. So if it is undervalued in such case also, case may the plaint itself may be rejected by the court but when seeing that particulars of plaint right the first part of order 7 we have seen that whenever possible party will try to mention like the exact amount whatever is the amount that they are claiming but in some cases take for example if it is like maybe dissolution of partnership and the partners are filing a case that the accounts need to be settled. There it will depend on profit and so many other things where it might become impossible for them to sort of mention an exact amount. So in those cases, it may be allowed that, okay, fine, even if you are not mentioning the exact amount, some approximate amount may be mentioned. So this is a similar case, commercial aviation and travel company versus V Vimal Panel. So here it's like, there it was like a partnership which was dissolved and case was filed for settlement of accounts then defendant was like it's not been properly valued the case like the plane should be rejected under uh 11 clause b because they have just mentioned like 25 lakhs to 30 lakhs would be like the approximate amount but court like this matter was filed before Delhi High Court and then finally it went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that it's not as such incorrect. They have mentioned like an approximate amount. So this is correct only as such there is no need to like reject the plane because sometimes it might not be possible. Even after following the rules and regulations, they might not be able to like come to one uh, specific figure. So there they may provide an approximate amount also. Third one is that the it was uh, where the relief claim is properly valued, but the plaint is returned upon uh, paper insufficiently stamped. So stamping and other things, there some uh, irregularities are there. It was not properly stamped. For that also, the plaint may be rejected. So if court provides him some time that this is the time provided, you can get it fixed and the plaintiff is not fixing it in such a case, court may uh, reject the plaint. So that would be rule 11 clause C, wherein the court would reject the plaint if it has been written on a paper which is not duly stamped and authorized. If the person is not able to make up the deficiency, then he can apply for a pauper as to continue the case. This is also very common uh, case type that we see parties would file a case and would again like request to the court. But then order under this rule rejecting the claim, rejecting the plaint must only be given after plaintiff has been given uh, the reasonable amount of time that he can make the uh, changes, he can make the corrections. If after that also party has failed, then it would also lead to rejection of the plaint. There was this case uh, before Cal so Calcutta High Court, Secretary of the State. The court held, the court had required the plaintiff to supply the amended plaint with duly stamped paper, which he failed to do so. It was held that held by the court that for uh, that further, the plaintiff will not be allowed to amend the plaint, and that plaintiff was directed to pay an extra amount of court fee the plaint was also rejected. So the 
plaintiff failed to do it within the requisite time, within the time which was prescribed by the court, he failed to make the necessary changes and uh, provide the copy in a properly stamped paper, sufficiently stamped paper, he failed to do it. So first one, cause of action itself is not there. Suit is undervalued or it is not properly stamped. Next one is which is barred by any law. Now, mostly it will be limitation act only, but sometimes under a legislation also some restrictions may be there. So if it is barred by any law which is prevailing in such case also, it may be, the plaint may be rejected. So in this case, the cause of action had arisen where plaintiff challenged like a gift deed was there and gift deed was challenged after 22 years from execution of the deed. So here the gift deed was uh, challenged after so many years and then court said that it is like beyond the limitation period so it would not be accepted. In fact there was one situation recently where uh, like a family family members right family members came to know after like so many years after more than like 90 or something years they came to know that their like great grandfather was having some property in some area like they just have the property documents but it's in Parsi in Parsi it is written so they were not able to read it somehow they got the information that there is a property where maybe some person is living right which that document they were not even able to identify the document okay so it might happen that there is like sort of delay and person may apply for condemnation of delay wherein court will look into the matter and uh, at the discretion of court court may allow that okay there was proper uh, like reason why there was delay on your part or sometimes it may not be allowed also so it is barred by the law whatever law is applicable in that case where the plaint is not filed in duplicate. So a duplicate copy of the plaint along with the original one should be filed for instituting the suit and the plaint would be rejected if the plaintiff fails to do that. Plus he also would be required to submit as many copies of plaint as there are like respondents in the case, he would also need to submit. So this duplicate copy he needs to submit along with the original one that is a requirement again where the plaintiff fails to comply with provisions of rule provided that the time fixed by court for the correction of valuation or supplying of requisite stamp paper shall not be exceeded unless the court for reasons to be recorded is satisfied that the plaintiff was like for some good reasons he was prevented which is like an exceptional nature from correcting the valuation or supplying the requisite stamp paper as the case may be within the time fixed by court and that refusal to extend such time would cause grave injustice to the plaintiff. So within the requisite time, the plaintiff needs to make the corrections. In some cases, court may allow also if there is like a genuine reason why there was delay on the part of plaintiff in making the corrections. Okay, so basically there are like five grounds based on which it may be rejected and sixth one basically says that it needs to be corrected within the proper timing only and sometimes court may even allow that fines like some extension might also be given to the parties okay so cause of action is not there insufficiently valued proper or sufficient stamping is not done barred by law of limitation not filed in duplicate and even when court has given the opportunity the party failed to uh, fulfill the requirements within the prescribed time frame and as such there was no valid justification also why there was a delay from the part of plaintiff so these may be the situations wherein plaint may be rejected by the court So this is the provision rule 11. Then we also have this part procedure on uh, rejecting plaint. 
so where the where a plaint is rejected the judge shall record an order to that effect with the reasons for uh, such an order what was the reason based on which plaint was rejected that would be mentioned and just like an order it would be passed and the if the party is not satisfied with that particular order he may even uh, challenge it before the higher courts as well that this order was not proper my plaint was wrongfully rejected by so and so forth so it has to be recorded as, as an order and that particular order may be challenged by the party as well where rejection of plaint does not preclude presentation of a fresh uh, fresh plaint the rejection of a plaint on any of the grounds whatever is mentioned in uh, rule 11 shall not of its own force preclude the plaintiff from presenting a fresh plaint in respect of the same cause of action as such when like a dismissed case might be dismissed also or it may be like plaint has been rejected so dismissal of case may happen at any stage right this would be like the pre preliminary stage where plaint would be rejected where court would look into the technical formalities whether those formalities are been satisfied or not if not court may reject the plaint but when we talk about dismissal of case cases may be filed and after that at any point in time court may uh, you know like decide to dismiss the case it may be that there is default from the parties or maybe court has realized that there is no you know like proper ground addressing this matter no jurisdiction at any stage it might happen but this would be like mostly in the preliminary stage where based on the formalities being performed or not the case might be rejected like the plaint may be rejected by the part court so as such when a plaint has been rejected that would not in itself or like restrict the party from filing a fresh plain plain before the court okay so this part was on rejection of plaint okay so first part from rule 1 to 9 it is like particulars from 10 10a 10b that is on rejection uh, like return of plaint and after that this is on rejection so this is on rejection of plaint 11 talking about the grounds for rejection 12 would be the procedure and 13 just a provision there okay. so those three are the major uh, parts which we have in order 7 after that here there are just three more rules that we have so first one is documents relied on in the plaint there may be some documents based on which only plaintiff's entire like claim is based on. Just a moment. Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? No, no, no. No, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So documents uh, relied on in the plaint. Now production of documents on which the plaintiff basically files the case or he completely relies on that particular document only in filing that entire case. Where the plaintiff sues under a document or relies upon a document in his opposition or power in support of his claim, he shall enter such document in list and shall produce it in court when the plaint is presented by him and shall at the same time deliver the document and the copy thereof to be filed with the plaint. So the original copy also the person, the plaintiff would present while he is uh, submitting the plaint. In case the document on which he is relying is within his 
possession or within his power that he can go and he can just uh, present it before the like while submitting his plane he would go and he would uh, present like the original copy and he would submit his plane and along with that he would deliver the document and a copy thereof to be filed with the plane but sometimes it may happen that he is relying on a document for his entire case or for the relief that he is seeking but then the document is not in his power or not in his possession. So in such case, he would mention in whose possession or power the document is uh, like available. And based on that, he is like filing the case or he is seeking the relief. A document which ought to be produced in court by plaintiff when the plaintiff has been presented or to be entered in list to be added or annexed to the plaint but is not produced or entered accordingly shall not without the leave of court be received as evidence in his behalf at the hearing of the suit so the party needs to mention it uh, at the time of filing the or at the time of presenting the plaint itself and he need to also mention it in the list that this is the document that I am like relying on. Without that, it would not be taken as an evidence. But yes, even though he has not mentioned it or he has not submitted it at the time of submitting the plane, there is no as such restriction that he cannot produce the document for uh, cross-examination of plaintiff witness or it may be handed over to a, a witness merely to refresh his memory so as a during cross examination it may be used but as such as an evidence that would not be allowed unless and until like court has permitted for it so if initially he has not submitted it then he would need to take permission from the court if court has allowed then he will be able to produce it as an evidence as well so this is like documents based on which the entire claim is relied for that only we have this three uh, rules okay first one is on that documents needs to be presented as well second one is on suits on loss negotiable instruments so negotiable instrument if any negotiable instrument is been uh, like entered by the parties whether it is promissory note bills of exchange check whatever it is so where the suit is founded upon a negotiable instrument and it is proof that the instrument is lost and an indemnity is given by the plaintiff to the satisfaction of court against the claims of any other person upon such instrument the court may pass such decree as it would have been passed if the plaintiff had produced the instrument in court when the plaintiff was presented and had at the same time delivered a copy of instrument to be filed with the plane. Sometimes it may happen that negotiable instrument was there, but then later on it was it, it, it is lost. It is no more available with the plaintiff but he had given indemnity on that particular uh, instrument. So in such case, plaintiff can uh, like establish that thing before the court, right? To the satisfaction of the court, he needs to like establish it that yes, indemnity was given by the plaintiff against the claims of any other person upon such instrument. So someone took money from another person or maybe some services and an instrument was entered between them and the plaintiff gave an indemnity over there right that in case you suffer some loss or anything i will be there to pay so in such cases even if the instrument is lost to the court satisfaction if it can be like established then court may consider as if the instrument is produced before the court and based on that court would pass a decree in such a case Next one is production of shop book. So where the document on which plaintiff sues in is an entry in a shop book or other accounts in his possession of or power. So the rule 15 was also on some documents 
based on which 14 was also like some documents based on which his entire case was uh, or claim was based upon here also it is based upon some document but this document is nothing but accounts in his possession maybe it is some uh, entry in a shop book or some accounts in his possession or power so the plaintiff shall produce book or account at the time of filing the plaint together with a copy of the entry on which he relies it might happen that it's like a big doc uh, like accounts but then there are some entries based on which he is like basing his claim so he would produce the original uh, book while presenting his suit and then together with copy of entry where he is relying on the main part where he is uh, suit is relied upon that part also he would provide a copy of that original entry to be marked and returned the court or such officer as it appoints in this behalf shall forthwith mark the document for the purpose of identification and after examining and comparing this original and the copy which has been submitted if it is found that this copy which has been submitted is proper only they would certify and it would be returned to the plaintiff okay and this copy only would be uh, like kept with the kept along with the plate that this original copy was also shown and we have verified as well whatever copy has been provided that is proper only so as such there would no there would not be a need that they submit the copy uh, along with the plate only they can simply show and take it uh, later on Okay, so these are on rejection of plaint and documents that parties are relying while filing the case. Uh, Ma'am, the difference between dismissing the case and rejecting the case, you mentioned that. So, can you just explain that? Dismissal might happen like at the later stage also. Okay, rejection is like based on the technical requirements that okay how do you present the case you submit like two copies of it you mentioned properly cause of action valuation and other things these are nothing but like formalities that we basically need to submit so rejection will be based on if you have not followed those formalities which we need to follow based on that the plaint may be rejected that you have not done this thing properly that thing is not sufficient like that it would be rejected but dismissal might happen at any stage uh, depending on the depending on what is happening sometimes you may see that like this during covid it was like online hearing right so court to issue orders that on so and so date we are like uh, fixing this date of hearing but none of the parties would appear from plenty of defendant no one would appear same thing would happen like three four times after that court will say that because of default no one is appearing from either party no update nothing because of default we are dismissing the case sometimes it may happen that court has you know like at the later stage court may found that whatever ground you are saying maybe that is not making proper sense or you have simply filed the case there also court may say that no we are like dismissing this case like that previously last class i think we discussed one case where it was like one person filed a case saying that i lost the election there was just few uh, you know like votes difference and then court was like no we are dismissing this case you have not provided material facts Right. So court may dismiss the case at any stage of the case, depending on a lot of different reasons. But rejection would be mostly on like the formalities, technicalities that we need to follow. Yeah, and uh, uh, dismissal, like it is part of an order, right? Dismissal, yeah, like if the entire trial, everything happened, like the complete procedure happened, then we say case is disposed. But if in between only something happens and court decides that let's end this case, that would be dismissed. In between, like abruptly, it just ended. Oh, oh. Entire process. After the entire process, if court gives some order, that would be like, oh, case was disposed, whatever might be the order. 
Okay, so this part was from plaint. Next we have is a written statement where we have counter claim and set off. That part is there. Okay, so this resection part maybe you can uh, read along with the case. It is like the 11, right? 11, 12, as well as 13, because from there there was the short note thing which was coming. So you can read that part then. Okay, so next one is uh, written statement, set off and counterclaim. We will continue with this part tomorrow. Mm -hmm.